All right, we're looking at the uh, second semester review covering chapter 11, which was area. This is what we did after triangles uh, through a couple weeks of February. Um, there were, I think, nine multiple choice questions, and you can see them right there. And number 10, you had to draw a little picture. And then there was on the back page. Um, 10 problems where you were working them out, mostly to find areas. I guess on number 10, you had to work backwards to, uh, to find, uh, think of radius. And so those are the answers. Uh, here is a quick look at some of these problems. Uh, none of these were brought to my attention at any point, but uh, uh, one, two, let's see. So yeah, area is two dimensional. So anything that is a, a squared unit is what we're looking for for area as opposed to volume, which is three dimensional. Then you'd want the cube and anything that's just a simple length would be one dimensional. Pi is a number, not a unit. Don't get confused by that. Uh, this guy is a definitely a sector. That's, if, if we cut across here, with a cord and then got rid of this triangle in here, then it would become a segment. But, um, yep, sector. Um, trapezoids are base one plus base two, uh, then multiplied by the height, and then finally divided by two. So 21 plus 16 is 37, times 10 is 370, divided by two should be 185. Uh, number four, three-dimensional object that has two polygons. So if it has polygon bases, it can't be a like a cylinder, right, or a cone. And then the fact that it has two of those polygon bases definitely makes it a prism. And then um, if the area of a circle is 121 pi, and we set that equal to pi r squared, I think we know that those pi's are going to cancel, and then we take the square root, and we end up with a radius equal to 11. And then to find the circumference, we just do 2 pi r, and 2 times pi times 11 is 22 pi. Uh, when we do the formula for an annulus, basically what we're doing is we're taking the larger circle, which has a you know, a big radius, and then we're subtracting a smaller circle, like, say, this guy, right, which has a smaller radius. And so it's, it's just basically big circle minus little circle, which would be D here. And uh, if you drew that same type of picture for number 10, that would have been the picture that you wanted for an annulus. Uh, number, make sure you remember the little radius always has to start at the center, right? Some people get confused and think the little radius is the distance between the two circles. That is not. That would be the difference between the radii, and not the smaller radius. Radii always have to start at the middle, right? The center of the circle. How many surfaces does a square base pyramid have? Well, it would have one base plus, because it's a square, it would have four uh, triangles going up. So that would be a total of five, right? One plus four is five. Um, number eight, um, a regular polygon. Remember what we did is we found the circumscribed circle so we could find kind of a central point and then we cut it all up into triangles, and there was a, a particular segment that started at that center of that circumscribed circle and was perpendicular to each of the sides. That's what they're asking for right now. We use that as the height of those triangles, um, but its official name is the apothem. And so here's kind of what it looked like. Um, if we started this, you know, this circle would be your, kind of your circumscribed circle. We find that central point in the middle there. And um, we go perpendicular to the side. That creates the height if we broke it up into the little triangles. And um, it's called the apothem. Number nine was a surface area problem, which really technically is um, the next chapter, chapter 12. 
uh, but it's stuck on here. And uh, there's two ways to approach it. The book does give a, a formula. It's kind of general, two times the base, so two triangles in this case, um, plus the perimeter of the base uh, times the height. And so as we plug the numbers in, we can see um, uh, what that would look like. And uh, the other way is just kind of break it down. Okay, I have two bases. Base one is a triangle, base times height over two. The other base will be the same. The bases of a prism will always be congruent. And then um, I just have three um, rectangles going around the sides and I just have to make sure I get those dimensions correct. And so then I could go through and just you know add up these pieces right here. Well, it turns out that the 51s um, added together would give you the same as this right here and the other three surfaces here would be the same as those rectangles added together so you get the same answer either way which in this case was 634 the back page or I guess if it wasn't run back to back then the other page of this review um, just had some uh, area problems mostly, jumping around your area formulas, making sure you were good with them. Uh, some of them were like, you know, not high school geometry problems, but maybe even elementary or middle school type problems like this one. You know, you just had to know pi r squared. And then if the radius is 6, you plug it in. Make sure you plug the 3.14 in since we're doing approximation. Remember, you can always keep track of that. But you get 113.04 when you did 3.14 times 6 squared, which would be 36. And multiplied out, you'd be done. Number 2, uh, the 1 half base times height for a triangle or base times height over 2. It's really kind of personal preference. They, they mean the same thing. Multiplying something by one half is the same as dividing it by two. The big thing here is once you know which side your height is perpendicular to, that has to become the base. Any of these three sides could be the base. Um, if uh, you know if 21 was my base here, I'd ha I would need a perpendicular segment coming through here to be my height. Uh, it should give you, you know, would give you the same area. The triangle is not going to change its area just because you're using a different perspective. So always make sure you choose the correct base and height as you uh, go through that. So 24 times 14 divided by 2 is 168. Um, same thing with parallelograms. Because I could take this parallelogram and I could, you know, I could twist it in many different ways. And you have to really pay attention to which side is the height that's given perpendicular to. In this case, it's just the horizontal side, so it's very easy. But if, uh, if we had a parallelogram that was maybe a little off kilter, like you know, this, and then maybe we had a height that was, um, so we want perpendicular. right angle in there kind of like that so now you would need to know you know this would be the base this would be the height based on where that right angle was so always you know choose the correct orientation and you can always kind of you know change your perspective a little bit if you need to see things differently but uh, 12 times 8 on this one is definitely 96 um, number four was a uh, you know regular uh, looks like hexagon and so we want to know, in this case, that our our regular polygon formula is ASN over 2, where the apothem is uh, 7. Sometimes they'll give you the apothem and the radius of the circumscribed circle that goes to one of the vertices. And so, you know, if they did that, you would have to be able to distinguish between those two values and know that the apothem has to have that perpendicular relationship. Um, the length of each side is 8. The number of sides on a hexagon is 6. And if you multiply that out, you'll get 168. Uh, number five was a sector. Um, don't get fooled when they just give you a, a, a value because it might be the wrong value. This would be a great number to use if they asked for the unshaded area. But since they asked for the shaded area, I have to subtract you know, from 360 and then use that value. By the way, 135 over 360 actually reduces very nicely down to 3 eighths. 
and um, they wanted you to leave this one in terms of pi, so you kept that as 6 pi once you canceled the fraction up. Um, here's our apothem, big circle minus little circle, so uh, be careful The 18 is not the radius, right? That's the diameter, so we needed to take half of that, and then uh, do your squaring first, and then your subtracting order of operations. Number uh, 7. Uh, another surface area problem, so really would fit better in chapter uh, 12, but uh, here's the two methods again, the, you know, book method that has this formula, two bases plus the perimeter times the height, here's the other way where we know we have the total of uh, the six surfaces, and so we um, just kind of find them individually, and if I added, you know, these values together, bam, 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 bam. Those would add up to the same, you know, total 1,048. In this case, square inches. Uh, the uh, cylinder is going to be, once again, this is more of a surface area chapter 12 problem, but it's going to be two circles. So that's the 2 pi r squared plus the lateral surface, which is 2 pi r times the height. Now that comes from unwrapping it into a rectangle. But I'll just let you kind of like take a look at that and see how we plugged in the numbers. We were um, careful <laughs> about order of operations. We did our squaring, then our multiplying, then our adding, and then finally at the end we approximated it because they asked for the approximate value uh, using 3.14. Number nine, another uh, sector problem. This time we're using 225, and 225 over 360 reduces to 5 eighths, and then 64 over 8 is 8 times 5 is 40, so 40 pi square centimeters. And the last problem, number 10. Uh, we had the, another sector, but this time we were working backwards. So we knew the, um, the measure of the, uh, of the sector. The arc was uh, 100, and the, we knew that the, sh the area of the shade was 10 pi. And so we had to first... Uh, multiply by reciprocals to solve for our square that we can take the square root. Um, let me know if you have further questions on these. Um, you know, you've got a nice laminated formula sheet. I would definitely uh, have that handy and be ready to use that and have a good time as you move into surface area and volume.